It's the Jacksonville Buzz. Amy West. Grant Smith. Adrian Houghton. From Studio 2 at Buzz TV, this is the Jacksonville Buzz. Welcome to the Jacksonville Buzz. We've got a great show for you. That's right, I hear we have a legendary guest, Grant. We do, we've got the legend himself, Jimmy Laidler from the Legend Fishing Adventures out of St. Augustine. He's really pumped for this interview. Yeah, and uh, he's in the studio already, right? He is. We're gonna catch some fish, Jimmy? Yeah, Grant, man, we're gonna tear them up. Awesome, <laughs> looking forward to it. Yeah, man, appreciate you having me. We'll be right back, stick around. Welcome back to the Jacksonville Buzz. You know, one of my favorite things to do when I travel is to get out on the water. There's nothing like a catamaran cruise or maybe even fishing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And Grant's got a great guest today. It's Jimmy Laidler from the Legendary Fishing Adventures. And he's over in studio too. So over to you, Grant. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Adrian. And we're here today with our next guest. And it's Jimmy Laidler from the Legend Fishing Adventures out of St. Augustine. How you doing, Jimmy? Good, Grant. Good seeing you, bud. It's good to see you. Yes, so sir. how's the fishing? It's great, man. It's great. This, this rain hasn't uh, held you back or what? Not really, you know. It doesn't affect offshore as much as it does inshore. So, uh, you know, fish are biting. So you're, okay. are you, are you pretty regular? You're inshore and offshore regularly, huh? Uh, I would do inshore a little bit, mainly offshore. But mainly offshore, I yeah. got you. Yeah. So how does a guy like you, how do you get started? It has to be, you have to be, you have to love it. It's not, you know, there's guys that like fishing, there's guys that love fishing. You have to love it because it's long hours, a lot of work. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, ever since I was a little kid, so all I wanted to do was be a charter boat captain. So Really? Hell yeah. So that's how you take it and take it to the business side. Yep. Ever since a kid. Ever since a little kid, man. Wow. So, dreamed so where do you fish out of? Uh, St. Augustine, out of the Conk House Marina. Now that's got to be an advantage. It is. You know, you got a lot of people there, you know, always visitors and tourists coming in and, you know, the reggae Sunday and, uh, you know, so, we pick up a lot. So what's that scene? They're walking down the, they're walking down the dock. They come across uh, the legend, uh, a boat captain and his guest, and they yeah. see you cleaning fish. I'm That's assuming right. you, you clean the fish for your oh, clients. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we do everything. Wow. Yeah, start to finish. So they walk out. They they see the uh, they see the spread, and uh, they're hooked. That's right. That's right. Well, it can't be a bad deal when you think about for the from the client's perspective, because whether you you fish a half day or a full day, they get off the boat, and they've got cocktails. In a restaurant and That's a bar right. grill right there. That's right. Yeah, it makes it a good time for everybody. So tell me a little bit about the types of trips that you guys provide. Well, we do uh, from four-hour trips all the way to a 12-hour trip. Um, we have two boats, have a 30-footer and a 45-footer. And, uh, you know, your four- and six-hour trips during the summertime are mainly king, king mackerel trips, you know, a little bit trolling for those. And then when you get your eight-hour trips, start bottom fishing, you know, cobia, snapper, grouper. So uh, it's a different boat for the different type of fishing? We'll do, well, we do either on both boats. Okay. You know, the, the big boat, those got air conditioned and super nice boat. I mean, top of the line. So let's talk capacity. The little boat. Six people. Now, what's that boat's name? Uh, the Legend. Okay. And yep. what's the big boat's name? Legendary. And how many people, what's the capacity on that boat? Six also. Wow. Yeah. So how far will you go out on the little boat? Little boat, we'll take it all the way, you know, 50, 60 miles out on a 12-hour trip. So you're not uh, you're not holding back. No, we don't hold back, man. You know, and and we the, get the fish. In the in the big boy, the big boat. Yeah, we'll get we'll take. You know, we've had some 75 mile runs on that one. So what's your longest charter? How, what are we talking hours wise? Longest charter. You know, we like to keep it at 12 hours. You know, as as far as a trip goes, but sometimes we'll stretch it out. You know. So you're not scared. No, we're not scared. <laughs> we're not scared. Overnighters. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. We do overnighters on the regular. Really? Now, what type of fishing is that? Can you combine styles of fishing? Oh, yeah. You can combine them. You know, uh, overnighters this time of year, we mainly do uh, mangrove snapper. Uh, catch them on the flat line. We chum them, and they come up in the water. You catch them on, you know, super light tackle. Makes it, a, you know, super fun to catch. You know, you can get 40, 50, 60 of them, you know, pretty quick. And, you know, that's the value in going out with a guy like yourself, boat captain, because... You, you don't need a novice. You need somebody that knows what they're doing. That's right. To, That's to, right. to, to catch that particular fish, because I would think there's a skill in knowing where those fish are. There is. There is. Um, you know, Brian, my other captain, he's been doing this for 30 years. You know, started off on the sea love and 
years ago. The C Love. Yeah. I've done some time on the C Love yeah, back man. in the 90s. Back now. in the 90s. Yep. Yep. Brian started off there and, you know, he's been doing it a long time, very long time. And, uh, you know, me and him combined together doing this deal has really worked out well. Wow. How'd you meet? How'd you meet him? Fishing. Brian. Yeah. Fishing. Yeah. He was running a uh, buddy of mine's boat and we just, you know, started talking and stuff. And How about know. that? Yeah. Yeah. So you, he's from St. Augustine as well? He is, born and raised. Yeah. Now, is he, uh, is he captaining the other boat? Yeah, he runs the big boat, the Legendary. Okay. And uh, I run the Legend. So when you guys, uh, when you find a client, do they ever ask the question, depending on the time of year, is there seasons in fishing? There is. There is seasons. You know, uh, right now in the summer times is, the, is, you know, what we call the mangrove season. Okay. A lot of mangrove snappers. Um, as we move on into fall, stacobia, grouper. Mutton snappers bite a little bit better. The bee liners, trigger fish spawn, all that happens. And then when you get dead in the winter, it's mainly cobia um, and wahoo fishing. Now, cobia are good eating, aren't they? No, cobia is great. Yeah, I yeah, thought so. Cobia is And fun. for years, correct me if I'm wrong, for years people thought that they weren't a, a great fish, right? Yeah, they were trash fish. Yeah, wow. pretty much, yeah, for a long time. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think your, your your trips can probably be geared to to anybody too, right? They can be geared to children. They can be geared to adults. That's right. To, yeah. To families. Yeah. yeah. You can be brand new doing it, you know, and we'll, you know, we help, you know, all the way through the whole process. So if a, yeah. a, a, a couple of dads came to you and they want to take you on, a, or you wanted, they wanted you to take them on a daddy daughter fishing trip, you could, you could swing that. That's right, man. Be what perfect. does that day look like? Paint that picture um, for me. Well, uh, depends on what time of year you're going, but it would be, you know, you guys show up at the dock in the morning, help you get all your stuff on the boat. And we'll go out there and, you know, we pretty much, Brand new people, we do everything. Bait the hook, you know, you drop the rod down if you're not comfortable doing that, you know. Ice the coolers? Ice the coolers, <laughs> everything, you know. You guys don't have to do anything. And what type of fishing would you gear around that for, for, for a daddy-daughter fishing trip? Probably or a king family? mackerel, something like that. Something nice and easy. You Is know? that trolling? Trolling, yep. Okay. Yep. Now, what else would you catch on a trip like that other than king mackerel? Oh, you catch some uh, bonitas, uh, maybe a cobia. Caught a couple sailfish this year doing that. Really? Yeah, so... You yeah. put a, have you put a little guy on a? On a yeah, on? sure have. Yeah. Then now that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Put that on Instagram. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Well, we um, we went fishing uh, a few weeks back, and uh, we did the uh, we took some we took our daughters fishing, and it, and we right. did the same thing, just what you described, and right. it was it was the real deal. Yeah. It's fun, so man. hold those stories, Jimmy. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Jacksonville Buzz. We're still here with Jimmy Laidler from the Legend Fishing Adventures. And now, Jimmy, I got a question. What's that? Fishing licenses. Do I have to have a fishing license to go out with you guys? No, you do not. We provide a fishing license for the boat. You okay. know, bait, ice, all the tackle. You know, we provide all that. <laughs> Easy enough. It is. It makes it real simple, you know, just to show up and go. So if I'm going out with you guys, what can I, what, what type of species can I expect to catch? A whole lot. We have, you know, king mackerel uh, on the short trips, you know, bonita, sailfish here and there, longer trips getting into cobia, uh, mangrove snappers, mutton snappers, grouper, scamp grouper, bee liners, trigger fish, mahi, you know, blackfin tuna. And again, I guess a lot of that has to do with the seasons as it well. It does. It does have to do with the seasons. Which we talked about earlier. Yep. Okay, now go through that list. And what's good eating and what's not good eating? Actually, everything on the list is really good to eat. Bonita? Yeah. Bonita is good. People, people have given Bonita a bad name, you know, and I used, didn't eat it for years. And I had a guy, you know, get me to try it. Uh -huh. And it's good. It's not as good as blackfin tuna, yeah. but it's not bad. You know, it's really not bad. It's not something you would turn your nose up at. If somebody cooked it for you and you ate it, you'd say, oh, this is good fish. So what's your favorite fish to eat? My favorite fish to eat uh, would be trigger fish is my favorite. Really? You know, that's my absolute favorite. That's great. I've been I actually black fly uh, in 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 Jacks and St. Augustine. That is like their fish special all the time. That's so right. I get more trigger fish than I could ever want. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So give me a fish recipe. What do you uh, What do you like to prepare at the house? Uh, I like to prepare fish all kinds of ways. You know, I like and, a, or what you know, particular what fish? How about that? What fish? What's uh, your favorite? Rainbow uh, runner. Really? Rainbow runner as a was another thing that's been known as a trash fish for years. Okay. And uh, makes great sashimi. It is probably the best you've ever had it's better than bluefin tuna it's better than anything you can name it's better than that wow yes yeah, it's, it's excellent. I'm, I, I didn't know what it was yeah, yeah. you'll have to coach me up after the show I will, and show, I will. Yeah, yeah, show yeah. me some pics yeah so what what would you consider the hidden gem so here on the jacksville buzz we love hidden gems so what out there that the general public would not your, your customer 
would not think that they would make catch that is great table fare. That would be the Rainbow Runner. Rainbow Runner again? That would be it, yeah. Give me one more. There's yeah. got to be one more. Well, you got the Rainbow Runner. You got Africa Pompano. Africa Pompano is another hidden gem. You know, you don't catch a whole lot of them. You're only allowed two per boat when you do catch them, but that's an excellent fish. Grilled, fried, sashimi, all three. It's just, it's phenomenal. You can tell I like to eat. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> do I. We, we so got do down I. this food, this, that's this right. recipe. That's right. Well, that's what fishing's all about. You know, it going is. out, catching fish, having fun doing it, and get to take it home and eat it, you know. Yeah. That's what makes it great. So when you're, you listed all these fish. Yep. And you mentioned red snapper. I did. And yeah. I know there's been some regulations on red snapper over the last several years. Coach me up. Tell me, how, how far back does that go? Uh, they closed red snapper in 2009. And, uh, you know, they closed it based on, you know, old data that they had. Interesting. Uh, up to it, you know. And, and up to that point, we were catching more red snapper than we ever had. You know, it was, you know, you could easily get your limit every day. Everybody was happy with it. Everything was fine. Um, they closed it down. Well, then everybody, you know, stuck with it. You know, not be able to catch red snapper. Well, now they've populated so fast. They have absolutely taken over every reef, every wreck. Wow. There is. And they eat They're everything. that dominant. They're that dominant, and they're voracious eaters. I mean, they eat everything. They're more you know. dominant than a grouper? Oh, much more. They'll, you know, a red snapper loves to eat baby grouper because they, you know, they're fighting for territory. Yeah. So the snapper doesn't want the grouper to get bigger than them and take over the spot. So, I mean, so grouper fishing has really, you know, went downhill since the closure. So how often can you fish for red snapper or can you not fish for them at all? They've given us two three-day weekends coming up, August 10th, 11th, 12th, and then again the 17th, 18th, 19th. That's right around the corner. Right around the corner, yeah. So it's couple days. two windows that close to each other in the same month? Two three-day windows, and that's it for the whole year. Wow, And there's literally millions and upon millions of them. So how do you get bad data? What, 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 where was the... I don't know where they came up with it from. They're saying there was only like, you know, at one point there was only 30,000 pounds in the entire Atlantic Ocean. You know, you can go catch 30,000 pounds on one spot. Sounds like they were asking somebody who was trolling. That's right. That's right. They went, you know, they had surveys at the ramp and they had, you know, they did a bunch of different things. You know, they did go to the boat ramp with guys that would fish, you know, four or five times a year. Yeah. Ask them, you know, well, what would you catch today? Uh, we right. caught a mahi and, you know, a wahoo. Did you catch yeah. any red snapper? Well, no. Well, they put that down in their checkbox and... And that's just for they, people at home, when you're trolling, you're not going to catch a red snapper. That's right. That's when you're correct. bottom fishing, that's when you're going to catch the red that's snapper. That's correct. That's correct. So give me a good fish story. I, got, I want a good one. Well, a good one happened about a month and a half ago. Um, took some friends fishing, actually, and my son was there. He's six. And uh, we're on the boat, and, you know, we're bottom fishing, catching, you know, some pink pinkies and some okay. trigger fish and things like that. Okay. And, a big giant mahi swims up behind the boat. My son's screaming, you know, big mahi, big mahi. And it was, it was like a 50 pounder. Right, right. So we catch him, put him in the boat, but that wasn't the good fish. After we do that, I look behind the boat and there's something black swimming in the water. And I think it's a sailfish. So I throw a little chum out to him and he comes up, starts eating it. And I grab a rod and I pitch it back to him and he eats it. And when he turned to eat, I said, that's not a sail. It's a short billed spear. I've short never seen. Short billed spear. Okay. I've never seen one in person. Never heard of one being caught out of here. And sure, he ate it, went, jumped all around the boat. We got him, and it was a, that was a once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-lifetime fish. That's incredible. Yeah, for sure. So it was that's, awesome. That's exciting. Yeah, it was. So do you ever get to fish on your own? I do, I like do. Personally, yeah. just go out by yourself or with a friend? And I do, I love it. You know, if we have a day off, we're probably going fishing. That's just, once again, it goes back to shows, shows your love for the, for the that's game. Right. That's right, going fishing as soon as I leave here. So listen, <laughs> Jimmy, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, uh, The Legend Fishing Adventures. You can follow us on Instagram, The Legend Fishing Adventures. And our website is www.thelegendfishing.com. That's awesome. Thanks so much for coming hey, on the show, man. You, bud. I yeah, want to go fishing. It. When yeah, are you going to take me? Let me know. Let's Let do me know it. You're ready to Thank go. you again, Jimmy, for being on the show. Can't wait to go uh, fishing with you. It's going to be fun. Yeah, man. All right. Do it. Back to you, ladies, in Studio One. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait to try that recipe that he was talking about. That oh, I know. Really good. I've never gone deep sea fishing before. So Actually, neither have I. Sign me up. We'll go together. <laughs> Girls trip. Girls trip. All right, thanks for watching. We'll be right back. Stick around. Greetings. I'm here with world renowned ophthalmologist Dr. Aaron Galani. Welcome to the Buzz. Good morning, Adrian. Thank you for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm going to jump straight in because. There's so much to talk about that I want to talk to you first about the fact that you have been responsible, I believe, 
for putting Jacksonville, Florida on the map for the destination for vision. Is that true? I guess that's too much credit, but yes, I've been blessed. Uh, basically, I have a passion, Adrian, as you know. Mm -hmm. I love to make people see and see beyond 2020. I've been blessed with Vision B 2010, which is two lines better than 2020 naturally. So it's my drive that in every patient I want, the best vision I can deliver in the most uniquely designed surgery I can. Oh, wow. I, uh, suffering from uh, not the best eyesight, I always think how wonderful it would be at my age now to be able to see perfectly and eventually that might happen again, but you actually design each individual surgery per person. How does that come about? Because normally it's like everyone goes into this room and, and has their eyes tested and then they go into this room and they have something else done and it's, it almost feels a bit like a cattle market, <laughs> but you don't do it that way, do you? I would refuse and that's the hallmark of my very existence, if you may. As you know, I teach our surgeons, I share my work with them too. To me, just think about it. Each one of us is so individual and then our vision is such an individual criteria and the most important sense we have. How can you deliver mediocrity by doing the same cookie cutter surgery? Mm. Take for example, LASIK, which is a very famous surgery to make people see without glasses and contacts or even cataract surgery. By doing 20 of them the same way, patients are happy, but it's because they don't know what they missed. And as you know, my other realm is how can you not design it and customize the vision to the maximum you can, oh. deliver the best they can deserve, and then their whole life opens up for them. Yeah. So I don't see any other way. You have to design LASIK, cataract, any surgery to make people see without glasses and contacts to the best of their mental capacity because the brain is the computer that sees. That's wow. the way you look at it. And you go after the highest level of vision that patient has and then deliver and excite them. I'm excited already. I mean, I, <laughs> I really want to now go and have my eyes done. For people who are out there who are suffering with a particular problem, what advice would you give to them? First of all, see your eye doctor and genuinely go to them and tell them what's the issue. Are you tired of wearing glasses? Are you tired of wearing contact lenses? Have you been told you're not a candidate? Well, where does this not a candidate come from? Most usually it's because the doctor does one or two techniques and hence, you don't fit into those two techniques. According to me, everybody over the age of 20 is a candidate for some procedure that can be designed for you to make you see without glasses and contacts. So walk up to your eye doctor, ask them to examine you, have them individualize your surgery. If it's LASIK, there are 23 kinds of LASIK technique that I suggest. There are 14 kinds of cataract surgeries. There are nine lens implant technologies from multifocal to progressive to astigmatism correcting lenses. So, and then you can even combine cataract and LASIK surgeries. There is no limits here to me, no limits. This is, this is fascinating. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that actually don't know this. And so I really do thank you for, for helping us to get this information across to the Jacksonville public, or in fact, to anyone who's, who's watching this. Now I'm going to, to take it a different way now. Dr. Gulani, the ophthalmologist, but Aaron Galani, the man, you're extremely fashionable. And I believe your first passion was fashion, correct? The equal passion. Equal passion. To me, I lose track of time when I'm helping people see and when I'm in between fashion and clothes and stuff like that. So to me, actually, being a designer, um, I'm very driven for my eye surgery to be unique. I want it right. to be a designer vision. I want it to look exotic, not a drop of blood. I don't like stitches. So it has to be, all these things drive me to take eye surgery for the world higher and higher. So it's a pleasure. For clothes and designing, as you know, uh, it's again, I'm privileged as I teach eye surgery all over the world. I go about, I take advantage of where I am, and I love colors. Colors are missing in today's life. You would never notice that, would you? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so, <laughs> So to me, it, it just comes naturally that I see people and I want to put colors around them. Yeah. And it's so simple. You know what I tell people, especially a lot of doctor friends I have and I joke with them, I said, you guys always wear gray, black and blue. Why don't you try colors? You're gonna zip up and button something every morning. Make it fun. <laughs> just coordinate it. And it's not much work. You do not have to spend more time. So to me, my drive of designing is you pick a color, then I design the cuts I want 
and then you arrange it. What I say is, clothes are meant to cover your body, yes, but why don't you enhance your image? Oh, wonderful. What a wonderful idea. Now, is this just for men or for women as well? Both. Men mostly, but women too. I've been doing quite a bit now. And to me, again, it's just like the vision surgery I do. Why are you just aiming to remove glasses? How about you aim for beyond 2020? In every patient. Yes. What a delivery and what a... It's every patient's birthright to see the best they can. Oh. Well, Dr. Galani. Aaron Galani, the man, thank you so much for coming along and telling us all about you and your fashion, but also your passion to help everybody with their eyesight. And if you need any more information on Dr. Galani, go to gulanivision.com. Thank you. And don't forget, the best things in life are free, the second best are extremely expensive. And welcome back. And wow, that was a great interview. Yeah. I really liked listening to him and his stories He's about the real food. deal. Mm -hmm. He is the real deal. Yeah. I know, and I really need to catch some big fish myself. And you know, it's a great <laughs> time to talk about with school back in session, like all the fun we had over the summer, on the water and off. And uh, you hit up Itch Techni with the family, didn't you? I did. That's a full day, but it's worth every minute. Mm -hmm. We left the house probably about six in the morning to be to take the long float from the north uh, on the, on the, along the Itchituckney River and uh, the north float I guess is about two hours and 50 minutes. Okay. So you've got to give yourself some lead time to get there. But um, pack a picnic lunch and it's do a you great... Eat that on do you the eat on the float? Yeah, do you eat it on <laughs> no, the No, no, no. Take a break? That's a good question. Gosh, I don't even think about these things, but you're exactly right. No, you go on the float, you finish your float, and then they have you know, ample amount of uh, picnic space. So you unpack there, no food, no drink on the river. Don't want the litter. So how do, you, how do you actually get, I mean, it's not circular, so you don't start one area and end up in they another. They have a trolley that can take you back to I your mean, car? Yes, yeah, so you park, depending on what float you're gonna do. So that, like I said, the, the full float from the north end is two hours and 50 minutes. And then there's uh, about an hour and a half float. So you park at depending on which float you want to do, and then you jump on their trolley. And you have two little uh, ones, so I can congratulate you yeah. for taking them on the full one because that yeah. can be like a little long for them. They were they were in it. I did to the win boat. It. I did the boat though. I did like a little raft. That's so uh, okay. With everyone in. Yeah, so my yeah, four year old yeah. could not get lost in the That's in the shuffle. Enough. That's but, super fun. But what a beautiful what a beautiful day! I'll tell mm -hmm. you though, the secret to the Itchituckney is getting on it early because the Florida storms. Don't oh, want right. to be on the river. Uh, uh, uh. Come noon, one o'clock. Well, hang on. What about bugs and things? No, no, no bugs. Yeah. And the water's super cold, ice, isn't it? Yeah. Ice cold. And there were mullet jumping. Mullet, and, and they they were eating either eating bugs or cleaning yeah, their scales. Bugs. Or I told you. It's this. such a great like <laughs> yearly tradition when you live on the first coast to like take your family to the springs. I know Jenny Springs is really popular, but it's more yeah. of like a party scene. I think. And, and I've never done that. People can take their drinks on the water, but yeah, I think Kitchatucky is great. We haven't been in several years, but it's definitely on our list. But you know where we did go? Um, we just got back from Port St. Joe, which is on the Panhandle, and that's beautiful. There. Talk about yes. beautiful water, right? Yeah, oh beautiful. my gosh, it was just crystal clear blue water and mm -hmm. our kids were just nonstop in the water and in the sun for like three days we were coating them up with sunscreen like <laughs> without limit Fantastic. got a little up Smart. close and personal with nature as well though because there were dolphins out in the water oh. and we were kayaking and there were some jellyfish did get stung but Ew. it wasn't bad and so then cool. um but what was really cool is at the very end we we're in the middle of this like school of fish, which I think you saw on my Instagram. And what were they called? They were glass minnows. Glass minnows. So because <laughs> they're see through, they're like shiny and rainbow. Yeah, so no. they were around us, and the kids would scoop them up with the nets, and you could hold them, and then like throw them back in the water. There's some predator that was pushing oh, them to shore. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. So we, we we kept our eyes peeled, yeah. but we didn't see anything too dangerous lurking about. Yeah. But it was a really cool experience, and I think it was such a hidden gem. I think hidden gems. We need to talk about food again. No, oh, oh. yes, I've got a hidden gem. <laughs> Do you like Indian food? Mm -hmm. Yes. I like it. I'm still exploring it, but I like it. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, I love to eat it. I love to cook it. Um, and there's a real hidden gem, which probably for people who like Indian food, it's maybe not that hidden. It's just on the corner of Bay Meadows and Southside, and it's called India's Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they do the most delicious Indian food. Having being in India on multiple occasions and eating the food there, oh, it's wonderful. It and so it's great. It's it does. That it's that authentic that they're not pandering to the American um, 
yeah, flavoring palettes, tastes. It, at it all. makes a difference too when you've been to a country. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. people think have their idea of Italian food or French food, and then yeah. you go to yeah, south of so France much. or or Paris, or you go to Italy, somewhere in Italy, mm -hmm. then it just you start realizing there's and there's different food in the different countries depending on yeah. the region. In India, you know, everything is so aromatic, and oh. scent is your number one. Uh, Absolutely, scent that, it's your number one scent that can remind you and kind of take you back to a place. So soon, I love that. As soon as Good I call. smell those things, oh, it's just Good so call. delicious. And and it doesn't have to be hot. I think a lot of people are worried about Indian food and Asian food in general um, being too spicy. Oh yeah, spice level. Yes, but it, it doesn't have to have a heat. It's again, it's right. aromatic. The, the the way that they grind all the spices together to form certain um, blends for different dishes. Oh, I could go on about Indian <laughs> food forever. Having having spent a lot of time mm -hmm. grinding and getting a sore arm with a pestle and mortar, but it's worth it. But it's when, really and worth when the it. seasonings are so fresh like that, they're so much yeah. stronger and more flavorful. Yes. They must think that American food is so boring. No, <laughs> because well, so many yes. of us do. Like we're so sensitive yeah. to the heat. I actually really love heat. I love, but that's the big confusion. So many people relate spice with heat, and, and spice is flavor, Very whereas. True. You know, heat is a whole nother thing. Yeah. yeah. And we're mm -hmm. seeing that with like hot sauces nowadays. Like hot, hot sauces, I think, are like the trend right now. Uh, how so many are there? Yeah. Uh, D and D or okay. B and D, they're locally. Yes. So uh, uh, that's a that's a good one. You know what I love, and I fell in love with it because I did um, a trip one time with the Firehouse Subs folks. Oh my and gosh. they make their own hot sauce when they use dattle pepper, which is local. Yeah, and Saint it's Augustine? very sweet. Yeah, it's out yeah. of yes. that's where it's native to, and it's a very very sweet, almost barbecuey type sauce with mm -hmm. that little pop of heat to it. And I put it on all my subs now, but I love it on everything. I first <laughs> discovered that at another little hidden gem, the Beach Coma down on uh, St Augustine Beach, yeah. and it's right on the beach, and it's a little tiny. Used to be a dive. No, it's a little bit smarter, but still not so much. You know, it's definitely a flip flops and shorts place. But that's where I first experienced that hot sauce. So many fun it. places yeah. to fire, discover. In firehouse subs, you get lost with their like racks of, you know, they have lots of hot, hot sauce. sauce. Good. Well, it's been a great show. Yes. And I'm Again. so inspired by all these hidden gems and all these fun, fun places. So make sure and check us out at thejacksvillebuzz.com, and we'll see you next time on the Jacksville Buzz. See ya. Bye, everyone. Hello, I'm Howard Walpuff here with The Buzz This Week, the top five events going on around Jacksonville this upcoming week. At number five, Lindsay Sterling and Evanescence at Daly's Place, Monday, August 20th at 7 p.m. At number four, American Lung Association's Lung Force Run Walk, Saturday, August 25th at 8 a.m. at the Jacksonville Landing. At number three, the Stars Align Tour, Jeff Beck, Paul Rogers, and Ann Wilson of Heart, Thursday, August 23rd at 7 p.m. at Daly's Place. At number two, it's the Maccabees, Sunday, August 26th at the Jacksonville Jewish Center at 3 p.m. And at number one, the Atlanta Falcons take on your Jacksonville Jaguars, Saturday night, August 25th, the preseason game at 7 p.m. at TIAA Bank Field. To check out these and all other events, click on IWantABuzz.com. But go out, have a great time this week, and we'll see you next time on Buzz TV.